Keep the curse at bay with an elixir a day like Edo from the Owl House by Dana Terrace. I'll show you how to make a tasty elixir and not the disgusting elixir Eda drank. First, you'll need a sphere-shaped bottle to hold the elixir in. For the shape and cost effectiveness, I went with Martinelli's apple juice. You could buy the glass bottles with a cork in it, but for the cost and ease of not having to uncork the bottle every time I wanted to drink, I suggest Martinelli's apple juice. I'll have both linked in the description for you to decide which bottle you want to get. I got a 4 pack of plastic Martinelli's bottles from my local supermarket so you might be able to as well or even find the glass version. The Martinelli's apple juice is quite tasty and you can save it to drink later. You can make the elixir for yourself for an Owl House marathon or as a party drink for friends and or family to enjoy while watching as well. Warning, if you haven't watched all the episodes of the Owl House yet, there are some spoilers from various episodes that you'll see in this video. Now that the apple juice has been drained from the bottles, you have a clear spherical bottle to put the elixir in. To give the bottle more of a look like the bottle in Owl House, I suggest you remove the temper ring as well. After you remove the ring, you can use a quick dry brown colored pen to color the cap to give it the color of a cork which seals the bottle. See how coloring the cap makes a difference in appearance? To fill the bottle with the elixir, I suggest you use a funnel to make it easier when putting in the liquid which has a wider mouth than the bottles. Dana never gave a recipe for the elixir like she did with apple blood so honestly the elixir can be anything you want it to be as long as it's similar in color to the elixir in the show, an orange yellow color. For this recipe I used orange juice but you can use anything similar in color like pineapple juice, tang or sunny d for example. You're going to fill the bottle nearly to the top. If your elixir isn't the orange yellow color you'd like, you can add red food color to change it to that color. The food coloring is strong so you only need one drop to change it. If you're making multiple elixirs, I suggest starting off with a larger container filled with your elixir of choice, add one drop of red food color at a time to it, then mix until you get the color you like. As this is a boiling aisles elixir, it needs to have a certain shine to it which is where edible glitter comes in to give you that razzle dazzle. While it won't make the elixir shine like it does on the TV show, it will give you a certain shine when it's hit by a light source. You can keep adding glitter to the elixir until it gives you the shine you like. When adding glitter, I suggest doing it in individual elixir bottles as it'll be harder to see the right amount of glitter in a larger container. It's a little hard to see in this video but it does have a shine to it after adding the glitter which sparkles here and there. As I said earlier, the elixir can be anything you want it to be, including an alcoholic drink for wine moms and dads. Depending on the ratio of elixir to alcohol which you want, in this case I'll go with 75% elixir and 25% alcohol, you can make it however you like as long as it's tasty. After filling the bottle with the orange juice elixir, I added apple vodka, which was left over from making the apple blood recipe video I'll link to in the description. With orange juice, you can mix it with champagne for a mimosa, tequila for a margarita, vodka for a screwdriver like what I made, or a Campari for a Garibaldi for example. Don't limit yourself as you can make a variety of elixirs to excite your taste buds. Just be sure to drink responsibly and to distinguish which elixirs have alcohol or not if you're having an Owl House viewing party with people who prefer not to drink alcohol or are underage. For the piece de resistance, you can make an elixir a day keeps the curse at bay tag to complete the look. For the tag itself, I suggest making it out of thin chipboard sheets. You'll cut out the width of the tag a bit less than the widest part of the bottle and a little taller than the bottle to give yourself room to write on. Make the top of the tag by cutting off the sides of it at an angle. For the lettering, I suggest using a fine tip pen for the smaller and thinner words then switch to a thick pen tip, like a sharpie, for the bigger and thicker words. It gets a bit boring watching me write the words, so I'll list a few things I love about Ida and you can let me know if you agree, disagree, and let me know your opinions in the comments. First, I love how she embraces herself, even when she's in her different owl forms, she does look fierce. Second, she is a wonderful mama Ida for taking not just Luz under her wing, that's an owl joke, but many others including King, Amity, Willow, Gus, Hunter, and don't forget the members of the Bats. 
I spent way too long listening and trying to hiss like them while recording this. Third, despite having problems with all her immediate family members, she did end up making up with them and not letting her relationship with them go away. For the demon at the bottom of the tag, I first drew it in the shape of a premolar tooth with tiny points between the two big points. A little angry V in the middle of its forehead. For its scary eyes, a slanted line going down next to the V, then an upward teardrop shape to complete it. For its horns, you can think of it like String Bean's tail without the ball at the end. Then I just colored it in with markers. Continuing with my love for Ida, she has an amazing personality. She's caring, fierce, loving, self-sacrificing, sarcastic, funny, and so much more which makes her a wonderful character. She also has a unique thinking process from throwing a bag of hex mix to distract someone then picking it back up after to thinking of body swapping with Luz and King without a second thought when they couldn't see eye to eye. After you're done writing and drawing on the tag, you'll punch a hole at the top so you can attach it to the bottle with thread. I used black sewing thread, cutting it off the spool a little longer than what I needed to make it easier to tie it to the tag and bottle. I double knotted the thread at the top of the tag to make sure it stays on and stays in place. I repeated the double knot under the neck ring of the bottle. After making sure the tag is securely attached to the bottle, I cut off the excess thread to make it look nice. You have now completed making your elixir to keep the curse at bay. Here's the recipe for my version of the elixir. A round bottle of Martinelli's apple juice, orange juice, edible glitter, red food color, and for all you wine moms and dads, apple vodka. Links to buy the ingredients to make your own elixir are in the description. Hope you enjoy making it like I did and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you! Now for the taste test, as orange juice tastes like orange juice, I tested the elixir with apple vodka, so an apple orange screwdriver. Quite tasty as you get a sweet citrus flavor from the orange juice which is mellowed out and made smooth from the apple vodka with a hint of alcohol. Again, you can make the elixir however you like as there is no set recipe, alcoholic or not, as long as you keep the orange yellow color of it. So have fun, experiment, and enjoy the flavor. Here's a bonus crafting you could do. Separate the tag along the top squiggle line in a jagged shape to match how King found the tag when he took it from Ida to bring it to Luz which was made whole later in the episode. Check out our other Owl House recipe videos you'll also enjoy, Apple Blood and the Fried Orb. Don't forget to follow Dana Terrace, the creator of the Owl House, on social media to see more of her wonderful art and future projects. Until the next Owl House recipe, bye!